Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Magic of Voxel. Now this is a program I've talked about a couple times in the past for a few reasons. One of the big reasons is it's free, the other big reason is it's awesome. So if you're looking for a voxel painting application or an application for creating, uh, drawing and rendering voxels or exporting them out to your game engine of choice, Magic of Voxel is probably the tool for you. And there have been a ton of uh, amazing pieces of art out there. You get just a handful of them I found on this Pinterest search. Uh, in, in the cyberpunk genre, there is just a ton of really impressive voxel artwork. And most of the stuff is ultimately done using Magic of Voxel. So I just am staggered by this program and I'm absolutely crap with it as well. But the reason why we were talking about it today is because there was a new release of it. And there's a couple of reasons of relevancy behind this new release, why I'm covering it specifically. First off, there's some nice new stuff in here. Uh, you got rotation in there, pattern warp brushes, uh, pattern pack panel, camera controls, and so on. We'll get to the release notes in a few minutes. Uh, but another big reason why we were covering this, and no, it's got nothing to do with Smile Cookie Week at Tim Hortons, but instead it has to do with this. Time to take a long break from development of Magic of Oxel. So this is the last release of this year. Won't be any major updates or interface changes in the near future. So just so you know, uh, Magic of Oxel isn't getting updated that much more. Um, so that is a bit unfortunate. Now, if you're interested in checking it out, Magic of Oxel is available at ephtracy.github.io. I will link that in the linked article down below. Uh, it is available again for download right here. One thing you will notice though, is that uh, there's Mac and Windows versions. There are no Linux binaries for Magic of Voxel. Um, unfortunately, but it does run under Wine as far as I understand. We'll get back to the release notes in just a second. But first, let us head on over and take a quick look at Magic of Voxel. Now this is Magic of Voxel. It is a straightforward uh, voxel painting application with a heck of a lot of capabilities here. So you can start and basically just compose. You could um, start almost working like you would with CSG, just kind of add voxels, take voxels away. If you don't know what a voxel is, a voxel is basically a cube. Uh, it stands for volumetric pixel. Uh, it was made really popular by Minecraft, which ironically enough uses a voxel data structure, but actually uses rendered polygons for its rendering. Uh, but this is where you go about, you basically start either painting them to change the color of each individual pixel, or you start carving into or adding voxels on top of things. It's kind of like working with Lego. On the topic of Lego, let's take a look at what we could do with this. So we've got our straightforward shape here and I'm going to maze it. So there we go. We got a nice cool maze going on. Like so, you got cool 3D navigation uh, using right mouse button to orbit, middle mouse button pans around, you can zoom in and out. You've also got control over how things are rendered, so if you want the edges to show up, you can show it, uh, wireframe on and off, and so on. So that is kind of the gist of it. So then once you've got everything going here, we can switch to various different modes here. So you've got, um, you see the description right down here, by the way. So we've got uh, box mode, face mode, voxel mode, geometry mode, shader mode, and then pattern mode, pattern mode being one of the new things that was just added, we're coming back over here. Uh, and I'm just gonna go into paint. So I'm in paint mode here. I will pick a color that I like. So for example, blue, I'll go flood fill. And then boom, there we have a really uh, abstract kind of 3D maze voxel creation I made in just a few seconds. And then we can go over and start rendering it. Now what you can see here, it is rendering as Lego shapes. Each individual block shows up as a Lego brick. Uh, you got a lot of control over how things are displayed. Here we go, kind of, it's rendering right now. There is the resolution you are working at. Uh, you can change things out. You can have it render various different settings. You can change out the lighting, the sky, and so on in the rendered setting. Uh, how many times it bounces, what algorithms to use. You could switch over to more of a tune shading if you so wished, or a pixelated view. Here is a realistic view of it rendering them as Lego-esque shapes, but I could go ahead, we could switch out to traditional cubes. You got more of that normal voxel uh, look. Marching cubes, clay, uh, cylinders, or uh, spherical voxels, or, uh, all right, cylinder and sphere voxels. So there's sphere, there is cylinder, and I'm going back to Lego because Lego is the bestest one. Now, if you like your creation and you want it to get it into your game engine of choice, you can head on over here. You've got export right here. Basically, straight out, you can save it as a Vox file. There are Vox file format readers for various different game engines out there. You can also come on over here to this, uh, what is that actually? Show IO settings section, and we can do an export out here. We can export out the, sl um, the selection only. We've got various different options to what export out, and then you click here, and you'll notice in this case, you have also the option of uh, 
PLY format, OBJ format, uh, Vox format again, uh, various different gr uh, graphics formats and so on. Uh, what you will find generally is if you're going to a game engine, the alias wavefront text object format is pretty much as universally supported as you are going to find a format out there. Uh, and then you can go ahead and import your creation into Unity or um, Unreal or Godot or CryEngine or wherever you want it to be. So you've got full exporting uh, features over here. Now we've also got a couple of things to work with. We can um, start out of the box. So go ahead, I can go ahead and create something like a teapot and let's get out of render mode, go back into modeling mode and let's turn edges off because they look a little weird. So here's where your, your teapot starts coming in and we can go into face mode and we can, oh, I'm still in paint mode. Okay. So let's go ahead, face mode, erase. And now you'll see as I go in, each time I click, I'm deleting the face that I'm looking. So there we go. We just carved a hole in this guy. Like so. We can also do attach and start building on top of the existing face. So you see the results right there or like so. That's face mode. We can just go straight up to here as well and just do individual voxels. So let's switch the color out so you can see what I'm there, there. Okay, why are you doing multiple? All right, I'm still in face mode. All right, come on. Let's go back over here. Attach there. So you see, we can do individual voxels or we can hold down the shift key and do a delete or we can do the opposite and carve down there. And basically what you're doing is you're just carving out your scene as you want to go. You've also got box mode so you can actually bring in a whole bunch of voxels at a time in a box. You basically start layering them on. So if you want to make a skyscraper, you can quickly make a skyscraper and then you build off the existing stuff. You start to expand it out there. And obviously we can change up the colors as we go. We do have tools here for just changing colors. But truthfully, I would recommend just go on over to the website. As you see here, again, it will be linked down below. Grab this guy, start playing with it yourself. It is a completely free program. It's actually pretty intuitive, and I am not really that good at it. So you're not going to want to watch me play around with this guy too much longer because it'll, it'll just be painful, especially if you've already learned how to use this program. Uh, if you're interested, though, here are some of the new details since the last major release. So... A few of these came at different times, but we have a uni new unified material system here. Uh, so again, this one was back in, uh, was that June? Uh, so we've got blood materials, uh, subsurface scattering, absorbed scattering, emissive media material, and improved alpha blending. We got a new transform and voxel shader brushes, refracted the brush menu and added icons, voxel shader brush to use, voxel shaders interactively and directly, transform scale brush, transform wrap brush, geometry mode, line, square, and circle, and world editor pattern and warp brush. We got the new rotate transform brush, so we rotate our axis rotate, press any, any inner circle, screen rotate, sphere rotate, snap rotate, holding down shift or alt shift, we have various different improvements to the voxel shading support. So if you're writing your own shaders, you've got some additional capabilities to do there. Uh, we have some improvements to editing, including Boolean operations for groups and objects, modify mask texture, uh, and so on. Camera control panel, click the arrow on the bottom bar to show the camera control panel. Uh, basically, this guy, I believe. Boom. And bomb. And then we've got uh, pattern pack. Again, this thing I didn't really showcase. I don't really understand it, but you can load all the models in a project as a pattern pack. Create pattern pack from multiple selected objects. Use left, right mouse button to rotate the preview model. Use mouse wheel to zoom in and out. One and two to select previous next color in the palette. Use three, four just for fun, apparently. Uh, use control alt to switch pattern tool. Control to switch to the move tool. I don't know, is it kind of an, an instancing kit? I'm, I'm not 100% certain on that one. I got to play around a little bit more, but truth of the matter is, I'm assuming, again, if you guys are interested in Magic of Voxel, you will grab this guy, download it, and be 10 times better at this program than I am in just a few seconds. Again, it is a pretty straightforward and easy program to learn. Uh, it's it's quite capable in what it can do. It, it is, again, all about uh, drawing, rendering, and exporting voxels, and it does that very, very well. And again, it is also very, very free. So uh, that is this newest update to Magic of Voxel. We've got Magic of Voxel 0.99.6.2, and sadly, as mentioned earlier on, uh, it's going to be the last version for, for quite a while because uh, he's working on other stuff and I don't blame them at all. I enjoy your break. Enjoy your time off. Hopefully it returns at some point in time. But truth of the matter is Magic of Voxel is pretty complete at the whole. And you know what? Have a cookie and smile. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.